I want to talk a bit about color. Uh, it's a major piece of my work. Um, I've been learning about color for the last 50 some years, um, but it was only in the past decade that I probably started taking it seriously and became more conscious of what I was doing with the forms of color. Um, as a piece of the elements in the art bag, this is a big piece. Now let me talk about color. Um, you can start talking about color in terms of density and transparency. An example of density would be, you know, where you're actually blocking it out here. And the transparency, here's a good example of that. And then the range in between the two. Um, that will allow you a full range of possibilities in structuring a canvas. Um, one of the things that uh, I've learned early on is that when you're out painting in the summertime, you have the option of painting green on green on green. And I have chosen to work to the to the side of selecting other colors, essentially color equivalents, that give me another choice in exposing more of the palette uh, that I like to work with um, to my canvas. So, um, in that regard, I'm working with still working with the representational image, but the color now has become something that has the similar effect of the natural color, but it's going to be different. Um, instead of a green, I may be working with a dense or a dark red, or a dark uh, earth color mixed with red. In any case, it's going to change the palette considerably. Um, I have to maintain some kind of fidelity, if you will, to the natural world. But at the same time, it's becoming a creation of mine. A very different world, if you will. But it has to still be probable. Early in my college career as an undergraduate, I had the opportunity to take in a major show of Bonards in Chicago. And I think I was a changed person when I came away from it. Um, I couldn't get over the airiness, uh, the radiance of the color that he used. And that was followed up by a Monet show that again boggled my mind. Um, so as a student, I started to explore color seriously at the time. And I have a few of the examples from that period of my life. Since then, I have been painting uh, with more often high key colors, um, representing the landscape in ways that um, many people attempt but have difficulty doing. The undergraduate painting that I'm referencing at this moment, was a piece that I got quite a bit of recognition from. Um, I had painted this in some pretty pure pigments, and I'm not sure I understood what I was doing. I, mean, I think it was all intuitive, which is not bad, and it seemed to work at the time. But I look at it right now, and I'm thinking it's pretty raw. Uh, of course, I've learned a lot about color since then. The piece that I did as a uh, master's program student has a more sophisticated use of color. Um, the color is not as high keyed, but you can see where the planes of color are used as building blocks to build the structure of the painting itself, which is 
one of the pieces of the vocabulary of, of color. Um, using color to build shape and form and delineate space. Okay. I need to share with you another important part of my painting, and that's how the paint is applied. Uh, paint quality, paint handling, the texture of the pigment on the canvas and the linen. Um, when things go well, I'm able to actually um, forget where I am, go into the zone, and my, my hands with rag or brush are delineating whatever it is that I've been working with. And the joy of being able to come through that space and, and then step back and look at what I've done with the pigment itself is incredible. Now where did this brush stroke come from? It's curious. I don't know how or when that starts. But I came into uh, college in the early 60s. And at that point, I identified an artist in California who had been an abstract expressionist, working with the slip, the slash, the splash of fat oil on canvas. And he had then gone to a representational figure, still using the brushwork that he had learned as an abstract expressionist. He became my hero for a while. Now whether I picked up on his surface and the way he was applying paint on the linen, I'm not sure. But I'll tell you, I came out of that experience painting like that, uh, as though I had owned it. I was drawn to it completely. So what I find as I work today, I'm using the application of some of um, the various techniques that abstract expressionists used, although I'm still working with the representational image. Um, as you look at this painting, you see that there are a number of areas where you easily see the brush itself. Um, uh, there are a lot of areas such as this where I, I may have scumbled with the brush, or dragged the brush, or actually stroked with the brush. Um, I've used rag to actually build larger areas and work with transparent areas and still keep that brush work loose and keep the textures within the pigment building. Um, I like to work the surface. I like to uh, build upon what I've done in prior uh, sessions with the canvas. And I like to build that up layer upon layer because it gets richer and richer in my mind. In my mind. Another thing about um, the brushwork is it helps delineate areas within the painting. It does talk about um, shapes. You can set apart um, tree forms as this one is. Um, it will be just with the loose brushwork being shown here create a space unto itself, all by itself, but the brushwork itself holds together and gives you that tackling 